from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube, covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Hey, welcome back everyone. You're watching theCUBE live here at Splunk.conference. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, my co-host. Our next guest is CUBE alum, Liam Cummings, the data and Alex CTO of CompuCenter. Computer Center. Computer Center. Computer Center, sir. Computer Center. Welcome back. Oh, thank you very much, John, and, and, and welcome, Jeff. Yeah, it's fantastic to be here. I did this two years ago, and to be back is absolutely thrilling. You're now a CUBE alumni. Place. I am a CUBE alumni. I'll have yeah. to have my little badge. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, sir. We're putting a Hall of Fame together. <laughs> you can maybe you know, first ballot nominee. I look um, forward to it. We're always entertaining. Thanks for coming on. So share with us what's happening. What are you seeing in the show here? Just give us some color around the vibe of the show. What's jumping out at you? What observational data can you share? So, I mean, what I see uh, in, in the show certainly is the level of maturity we now have uh, using uh, sort of operational analytics, uh, what we can do with Splunk. I think when I was here two years ago, it was sort of emerging, evolving, but we're now reaching a saturation point and the opportunities are, are sort of reaching up and catching up with the vision. So now what we can do is real things to help enable our, our users and certainly help to drive uh, the promise of data analytics in a very positive way for ourselves as a business and indeed for our customers. It's a very exciting space just now. So let's talk about the market dynamics and what yeah. you guys are doing with your customers because we were commenting last night and certainly in theCUBE, we've always said this publicly that, you know, nothing to be ashamed of Splunk. You start on the bottom of the food chain, log data, kind of no one wants to do that job and finally someone did it really well. Okay, and they grew from that as a company, Heritage, great software. Yeah. So they're moving up the food chain. Now you're hearing business analytics. Yeah. You're hearing machine learning. This is like, this is like the big game. It is. It What's is. your thoughts on that? So, what I mean, are you guys seeing? Well, I'm very pleased that sort of my company, Computer Center, of I've sort of I've taken the bit by the teeth and we're looking at getting a, a data analytics CTO. It's the first one I'm that I'm aware of across the world. So we're actually taking this very, very seriously. You know, let's not just uh, go for low-hanging fruit. I think we're in a situation where, uh, you know, using big data is not just a nice to have, it's something that we need to have in terms of competitiveness. It's, it's going to be, I think, a, a differentiator for us. And we're determined to actually, you know, grab onto this. And for what I can do in my job, I can be dedicated across the entire group across the world to ensure that, you know, these best practices, our industrialization, and, and indeed our promise is delivered consistently, and not alone delivered consistently, we can actually have a life cycle for that. So we'd have a backlog of what we need to achieve, we bring it together, we bring it through, and we have uh, quality around that at all times. So I think we need a lot of rigor, a lot of governance, and a lot of determination, because it's now all parts of the business. You know, it's not just IT, it's about, oh, I'm speaking to marketing, I'm speaking to everyone. It's about how can we actually, because with data analytics, it's a thread that goes through the entire business. So it's vital that we put into the fingers of the decision makers those beacons of enlightenment so we can actually have lovely actionable uh, information and insight. So that's the drive, that's the motivation. But the amount of opportunity that we have is palpable. It's absolutely everywhere and it's so easy to see and to visualize. But the beauty is with, with, with operational intelligence and Splunk is that we can be hitting success factors all the time. It's not just we'll do something and come back in a couple of months. We can be hitting those at all times and actually keeping the momentum, keeping the traction, and keeping the excitement and the energy moving. So it's a very exciting place to be. And are you getting that same vibe from your customers? Are they, are they to the point now where they, they get it? They, they've got to be there. And they're, you know, they know it's not an option anymore. I it's, think it's so. I mean, you know, our customers are very mature. We've been going since 1981. People know that we are living in, in a big data world. People know we are living in a world where data analytics is something that, that has expectations around that. So our customers are expecting more, and indeed, we are expecting of ourselves more to give to our customers to help enable their experience. So we are actually moving into this next uh, sort of uh, era in what we need to be delivering in a very fast and furious way. We cannot stand still. Yeah. We absolutely cannot stand still. But you got to be careful, right? They don't get defocused with all this great opportunity and things pulling you a lot of different ways. So how do you kind of prioritize both internally but also for your customers on you know, how to grasp this, this opportunity without just getting drowned in 
well, into too many projects and too many kind of angles. So I mean, I've got a lot of experience in the data analytics world, and the beauty is, you know, my company Computer Center brought me in specifically to do this. Because we know that in the Splunk world, we have people who do Splunk, but actually, they typically have a day-to-day -day function. My function is to do this, is to deliver on the promise. So I've got three key areas across what we would call supply chain, because we're the, a big elite partner in, in Europe. And we have uh, our managed services, so we do service tests, even using 18 languages across the world. And we're also having our, in own, our own internal use case. So we have those three pillars, if you will, that we have to deliver on. But there's synergies across them. So what we do internally, we can showcase to our customers that yes, we do this, but yes, actually, we've done this ourselves, and these are the results. Please come and see, and you can have it as well. So it's very important with Splunk to manage your expectations and make sure you can deliver on those things because uh, Splunk uh, does create excitement, it does create uh, energy. So we need to harness that energy and make sure that what we do is, is sustainable, is industrialized, and is quality. What are you seeing on the IT service intelligence? What's your take on that? Have you reviewed that? Have you even previewed it? Did you, did you uh, look at it? Absolutely, sir. Yeah, I did the uh, IT service intelligence bootcamp last week in London, and it was, for me, a statement on, or an expression how, how Splunk has grown up. That, uh, I mean, IT, sir, I've, I've got a background in service management, so for me to see that, I'm thinking, oh my goodness me, this is absolutely fantastic. The Splunk are not just seeing what, what might happen, they're actually setting the trends. So the fact that we can now have IT service intelligence to ourselves, to high quality, and maybe we can expose some of that to our customers, we can be looking at our SLAs and we can be making decisions, uh, taking actions before things may get surfaced up. So I, I do sincerely congratulate Splunk on this and along may this continue. It does help us as a business and definitely helps uh, our customers to make sure that they're driving what they need to be driving so, for themselves. So one of the um, European analysts out there, firms, or global firms, uh, Digic, Digicom is, um, had a post on Dennis Howlett's company. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to quote uh, a quote from that article and I'll get your thoughts on it. Uh, this is from the um, diginomica.com. It's on our crowdchat.net. Um, it's evidence that Splunk is maturing across a number of areas and that is it is consistently filling out the gaps across its product line while simplifying how it approaches the market. So how, how are they as a partner on the go-to-market? Are they, are they easy to work with? I mean, they're trying to simplify. We heard them, the partner focus is critical, global footprint, transits to the cloud. Do you agree with that statement? Yes, I do, sir. And my view is that we need to have uh, grown up uh, maturity on, on both sides. So I take a 360 degree view. So I am absolutely determined and resolute, as I was in my previous position, that we are a, the most progressive partner you could imagine. So it's not just Splunk giving to us, it's us giving back to Splunk, ensuring that together we're creating synergies and energy and delivering what we need to be delivering, so we're completely focused. But we all have a responsibility in this. It's not just a case of, of consuming what it is Splunk do for us, it's a case of together we'll make something quite special and robust. What are the top three conversations that you're having with customers in the market today? Well, I mean, a key one we're having is around our service desk. So we've got service tests around the world, and we're, we're, we're delivering those in 18 languages. So when you have service tests around the world, you want to ensure that you know, we have global standards. So what we can now do with Splunk, we can actually take what we've done in one place, do it extremely well, rapidly, and apply that across the, across the board. So the service desk is quite key, and customers, they want, they want to see these dashboards as well. It, it, if they can see that everything is good, and especially, so exa I think executive dashboards are even better. We just want that green happy face, and that tells we're all okay. <laughs> so I think there's options there to deliver quality and to deliver value to our customers. But for me, it's all about delivering value and delivering value in a highly visible fashion. Well, final question for you. Share with the folks that aren't here. What's it like this year? What's going on? What's the vibe? Share some color. How'd the party go? What's the conference sessions like? What's the overall walk away being here on the ground? Uh, being here this year is absolutely electrifying. You can see that there's more stands. We have a sports car in the background. The party last night was amazing. But with Splunk, again, I do congratulate. The SVPs are senior guys. They're walking around. You can get to them. They are accessible and, and they're approachable. Everybody around here is buzzing. We're all walking on water and we're all looking to the future. It's absolutely you must come to .com, you must come to Vegas. Acting it's like a startup, but they're one of the big big guys now. They're yeah. a big company. Yeah, I mean, okay, they're Splunk are a big company, but they still have the family feeling. And that's something that I, I, I'm very proud of, to work with Splunk. 
and that's very important. We do that ourselves at a computer center. We do have the global reach, but with local expertise. You always have to remember your roots, and they do that, so well done. Awesome, well thanks for sharing your insight on theCUBE. Appreciate you coming back. Thank you, John, thank you, Jeff. Okay, Absolutely. we'll be back thanks. with more after this short break here. Day two coverage of theCUBE here at DotCom 2015 Splunk Conference. We'll be right back.